students and faculty. My name is Kelly Metzger and I'm a senior at Apple Valley High School. Today we are going to stop and take a moment to think about an activity we do every day. Texting. Sending a text message is quickly becoming the leading method of communication because it's convenient and easy to do. Unfortunately, more and more people are choosing to text at the worst possible times. Did you know that? Texting while driving makes you 23 times more likely to be involved in an automobile accident. More than 100,000 crashes each year involve drivers who are texting. These accidents cause life-changing injuries and deaths. 97% of teens admit that texting while driving is dangerous, yet 43% say that they continue to text and drive. As a school, we feel that it is important to talk about how texting and distracted driving directly impact our lives. This morning we are going to see two short videos. The first video will take a look at how a few Apple Valley students view texting and distracted driving. Then, we will take a look at an emotional video created by AT&T, which shows how one text could alter your life forever. Please turn off your phones and pay attention. Thank you. Probably way too much. I, I absolutely love my phone. I got the iPhone 5 and it's the best phone ever. <laughs> it's like my life, pretty much. I love it a lot. I could probably not live without it. Um, it's new, so I like it, or I love it a lot. <laughs> I really love my phone. Like, I need it throughout the day. I love my phone a lot. I like it a lot. I really do. I don't really love it, but I need it to communicate. It's one of my only ways to communicate. I really love my phone, but I think it's more important that I stay focused on driving. Not that important. They're mostly like a hi, how are you, or what are you doing today? So they can obviously wait the 30 seconds or 10 minutes it takes to drive anywhere. Most of the texts I've seen people texting out is not very serious. It's just like, um, how's it going and stuff, which I think would, should be waited for later in the day when they actually see their friend. They're rarely ever important. They're just filling up space, time when I'm bored. It depends on who I'm texting and what I'm texting about, so I think it differs day to day. My texts are usually just, hey, and yeah, and I'll be home soon, and they can definitely wait. While driving, and it also just like in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's important at all. Not on like, not as important as somebody's life. Texts aren't important at all. Like, there's always different ways of communication, but the fact that you need to do it right there on the second, like wherever you are, it's not that important as to trying to give your life for one simple text message that could be anything. Yes, I have texted while driving. No, I have never texted while driving. Yes, I have texted while driving. Not my proudest moment. I have texted while driving once. Um, no, I can't drive yet, so I haven't texted while driving. I have. I have texted while driving. Yes, I have, and even though it's wrong, I still do it, and I'm struggling to get better with it. No, I've never seen them text and drive before, but they do have like a hands-free device in their car, so I mean, they talk while driving on their phone. My mom. I just close my eyes and pray. <laughs> Um, yeah, my parents text and drive, but not if I'm in the car, because then I just ask them. If it's not personal, I just ask them if I can say it for them. No, my parents are strongly against texting and driving. Yeah, my mom texts and drives. Usually I say, like, I'll text for you, or I'll grab that, or, like, tell me what to say. My mom's really good about it. Um, she'll, if there's somebody texting her, um, I'll take the phone and tell her what the text says, and she'll tell me what to respond by, so... My parents don't text and drive. They're incapable of texting while sitting in the living room, so <laughs> texting and driving doesn't work really well for them. My dad doesn't text and drive. I take his phone and I ask him what does he want me to say. Yeah, all the time. Like, whenever I get a ride with them or I'm riding with them, they just text and drive or they're on the phone and driving. And they don't seem to pay attention. My parents do not, but if their phone goes off in the car um, and I or my brother are in the car, they hand their phone to me or my brother and then they tell us what to text and we text it if it's important.
I think they are even more dangerous than texting because um, when you look at like a Facebook app or Twitter, all the like font is smaller than like a text, so it's harder to you're going to be like looking at your phone more and like you'll be more distracted as you're trying to read out that small font. I think apps on phones and social media are probably worse because there's so much more than just the simple text. There's a lot more distractions. Yes, because people scroll through social medias a lot more, spend way more time on social media websites. Basically, social media is the same as texting, really dangerous. Um, yeah, it could be pretty dangerous depending, like even if it's just for a couple seconds you're looking at it, it still could be pretty fatal to what happens next. The same, I would say, probably maybe a little worse because on average you're, you're more taking your eyes off the road for longer periods of time and not drinking and driving, you probably are looking at the road and you just have bad vision, but texting and driving, your, your eyes are basically closed. I think it's probably more dangerous just because you're completely not looking at the road when you're doing it and you're completely into your phone. So it's completely your choice knowing that you can injure someone that you chose to answer that text. So I think it's almost worse. Really, texting and driving is much more dangerous. You're looking at your phone, drunk and driving, you're looking at the road actually. You, you, can, you can't see that well, yeah, but you are at least looking at the road. You texting and driving, you're focusing much more on something way less important than your own life. Drinking and driving and texting and driving, the dangers are very similar because they both can have fatal consequences. Honestly, texting and driving and drinking and driving, in my opinion, are very much on the same level. Well, like when you're drinking and driving, I mean, I guess your eyes are still technically on the road, but you're not very conscious of where you're going. And the scary thing is when you're texting while driving, you're sober, so you know exactly what danger you're putting yourself and others into. So it's a lot more scary that you're holding your life and other people's life accountable for a text message. Like, it's no big deal. If I'm driving 30 miles an hour and I look down for five seconds, um, maybe 50 yards? Uh, I'm going to estimate probably like 400, 500 feet maybe just by the speed and the seconds you've been looking down. And I think I might have traveled probably 15 feet maybe maximum. About 10 to 30 feet, about that, yeah. At least. 30 feet, 30 feet definitely. 10 miles. I'd say like five feet, I feel like a foot per second. Even if it's a straight road, you could drive pretty far, but it's pretty dangerous. Not like, I probably wouldn't go that far, probably like a mile. It's far enough to kill someone. I think ultimately you have the responsibility, even though you're not the person with the phone in your hand sending or receiving the text, if you make the choice not to be a responsible driver and watch out for those that are texting and driving beside you, you're just as at fault. The driver, um, it definitely, you put yourself in a bad position, like they said, 23 more times likely of crashing. I think the driver has the ultimate responsibility. Um, you really can't blame anyone else for texting you and you can't blame the person who sent it or the passenger or anything, it's your choice to look at your phone. The person who has the responsibility would have to be yourself. All the responsibility is on you. You can't blame that on anybody else if it's your fault that somebody died. The person that is responding to the message has the most responsibility. Myself, because it's my choice to look at my phone or not, and if I do, it's my fault for what happens. The driver has the ultimate responsibility. Anyone who looks at their phone, texts while driving, or even pulls it out has, is responsible. You have the choice to think about if you're going to text or drive, but not at the same time. Um, I think it's whoever's sitting in the um, driver's seat um, because whether they're sending out a text or they're receiving a text, it's their responsibility to know that it's more important just to wait 
for you to get to wherever you are or to pull over your car before you pick up the phone. It can wait. 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 My name is Grant Hendricks. I'm a trooper with the Missouri State Highway Patrol. I'm at the site of Mariah West's accident. Mariah's vehicle traveled across this median and ended in uh, striking the bridge that you can see behind me. When I got to the scene, her face was disfigured from sliding down the roadway. It's, it's funny, the, the first thing I noticed about her was her shoes. <laughs> Lying in the roadway in a, in a large pool of blood, I noticed her shoes and I thought, this is a young girl. That's the first thing I thought when I saw this. And at that point is when I noticed her cap and gown was still in her car. She was going to graduate the next day. It was just a really horrific scene. All because of a senseless text message. It's just sad. Sorry, it's just sad. Ashley would text hundreds of messages every day. That was the way we kept in touch. We would definitely text more than we talked. Mariah was a multitasker extraordinaire. She could text better than anyone I know. She could be having one conversation with me completely focused while having a text conversation with somebody else. When you do something 7,000 times a month, you tend to learn where those 26 letters are. We would be at school, at home, movies, bowling, driving, not even looking at her phone. Just simple, insignificant, useless bullshit, whatever it may be. About anything and everything. Just a way to pass the time. It didn't matter where we were, we were constantly texting. This is my sister. She was looking at my message that I had just sent her. When she looked up, she had clipped the median on the left-hand side of the road. Her truck flipped, and as it was flipping, she was actually ejected through the driver's side door, and she landed in the ditch about 300 feet from her truck. People will tell you over and over again, it's not your fault. But knowing that you were the person that she was talking to when she was killed. Just knowing, having a highway patrol officer write in a report that a text message sent at 12.05 is the reason that she is dead is not something that will ever go away. If I could talk to her one last time, I would just say I'm sorry. This is her cell phone that she used in the accident. Four little letters. That's what killed her. You never really think about it, but people associate drinking and driving as a dangerous thing. Your vision's impaired, your judgment's impaired. But if you look at texting and driving, your vision's not even there. You're not even looking at the road. Ask me to drive down the road and close your eyes for five seconds or six seconds. I would, I would never even attempt that. But then if someone asks, read, read this text message and respond to that in about the same length of time, well, that would no, be no problem. I'd done that numerous times in the past before this accident. I was on my way home. I had my girlfriend in the car, and I'm just reading a text message, responding. I was looking up every couple seconds or so, like I always did. And I just hear a loud scream next to me. And the next second I look up and I see a bicyclist crashing the windshield.
When I got out of the car, he didn't have a pulse. He wasn't breathing. He wasn't alive. There are no words to describe the level of grief, the level of depression and self-hatred I was going through. My first year of college, I just remember one girl recognizing me and saying, oh, I, I, I remember hearing about you. You're that guy who hit the bicyclist because you were texting and driving. That was actually the day before I ended up going to the hospital for emotional problems. I sent one stupid, meaningless text, LOL, and killed a man. People don't realize it could just take three seconds. I was going to the movies and the car just went directly into the tree and it was a direct collision. I was the passenger. I collided with the tree on my right temple and I was declared dead on the scene three times. I used to be able to drive. I used to be able to go for walks. I used to be able to run around town by myself. I used to have a job. I was normal. And all this, I, I cannot do anymore because they had the text. This is the text message that changed my life forever. The day before her graduation, my daughter drove to go meet a boy, and she never made it. Today, she would have been 19 years old, exactly. Mariah never wanted a minute to go by that she wasn't doing something. She wanted to do everything all at one time with friends and family and just having a good time. That's what she loved. Friends would tell me from school that, you know, the best part of the day at school was Mariah coming down the hall because she'd stop to give everyone a hug. OK, guys, in honor of Mariah, <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mariah. She met a guy Happy who played baseball. And one evening, she just spontaneously got in her car and said, hey, I'm going to come watch his game. He was texting her to tell her directions of where she needed to go. And I guess she just looked away for too long. Where, where are you at, you know? Like, that, that was it. One of her friends had no idea that she had been in an accident, so he kept texting. We ended up having to send him a text back to say, please stop. She's in critical condition in the hospital, and we don't know if she'll even make it. She always worked her magic, you know, and still to this day, without her being here, she's so much still a part of our lives every day. She was our sunshine. She really was. She was. It's a simple text message. Where are you at? Three simple words. She paid the ultimate price for her actions. I've had to do this more than once. Mariah is not the only, the only victim that I've dealt with. And it never gets any easier. And it won't get any easier. What is worth losing your life over? That text message?
that you can take a moment to think and discuss about what you have just seen. Your second hour teacher has a poster where you are able to sign your name and pledge that you will not text and drive. By the way, when you text for five seconds at 30 miles per hour, you have traveled approximately 220 feet. Remember, it can wait.